I'm Honora O'Neill and I'm publishing Constructing Authorities, Reason in Politics and Interpretation in Kant's Philosophy. It's a set of papers about the different ways in which we think about reason and in particular the idea that we can't even take what we call the authority of reason for granted. It has to be put together just as we construct political institutions or we construct interpretations of texts. So reason itself, that great authority, is a constructed authority. Um, there have been a lot of challenges in uh, writing this book because to put it very simply, the very idea that you can justify standards of reasoning seems to many people incoherent. Surely reason is given. As Descartes tells us, reason is complete and entire in each one of us. So it seems that arguments in which we appeal to reason are going to have arguments from authority behind them. And that makes it sound as though reason actually adds nothing. So I thought we could say something uh, more interesting and that Kant's philosophy gave us a real insight into what it is to have reasons for what we claim or what we do or what we believe. Politics is the easy one to start with. In politics we think of ourselves as constructing institutions which then will have authority. Uh, maybe a constitution, a parliament, uh, a court, uh, laws. And that perhaps gives us a clue to what we have to do when we reason about other topics. We can't just take for granted that there is some given authority called reason. We have to think about what's involved. And what I suggest is that what is involved in giving other people a reason is that you meet them as it were halfway. If I'm giving you a reason, I suggest something that I think you can follow in thought, you can understand, you'll find intelligible. If what I offer you isn't intelligible to you, it won't be a reason for you. So the authority of reason rests ultimately on the thought that it has to be something I can follow and it, I don't offer you a reason if I give you something that you think is gobbledygook or arbitrary or inadequate in any of countless other ways. And out of those very slender starting points I believe we can construct a view of what it is to reason about science, about ethics, about the interpretation of texts and lots of other things. Well, it's a very simple one, and it, I'm afraid it isn't from the Cambridge translations, it's from an older translation, reason is no dictator. I think it is that he took seriously this utterly basic question, what is it to reason? Rather than taking for granted, we know perfectly well what it is to reason, now let's do it and we march ahead, we better start and by thinking, well, how do we do it? What is it? And why is it justified? That's why he called his books, as we all know, the critique of pure reason, the critique of practical reason, the critique of judgment. If you think about it, it seems very odd to say that we could criticize reason. What would a critique of reason be? Wouldn't it undermine itself? And uh, my uh, book argues that he finds a way of addressing that fundamental question. I take seriously the question of whether reason has any authority and why it has authority and I think that I show that Kant offered a clear and very exciting answer to both those questions.